I'm uh, Jim Pritz, Chief Technology Officer for uh, X3D here at our booth, and uh, I'd like to give you a little tour of our uh, eyewear, what makes us uh, different and special. Uh, we specialize in, spe in passive eyewear for the growing number of applications using the uh, technology that first emerged in the theaters and now is coming into the home. Uh, there are many advantages to passive systems, uh, and uh, not the least of which is the eyewear, of course. It's much more comfortable, lightweight, doesn't require batteries, inexpensive, can be worn in multiple formats, uh, ranging from the theater to the home. Uh, also, uh, we had a dual purpose uh, so they can be used as sunglasses. We have 100% UV protection, the lenses are scratch resistant, impact resistant, and uh, give a great way for people to have their own personal eyewear to go back and forth from the 2D and 3D worlds. So uh, let me just uh, take, take you around and... Sure. I'll follow you. Okay. <laughs> we do uh, uh, a lot of different styles uh, because everyone has their own taste. We have multiple brands, multiple shapes, multiple colors. And the whole idea with personal eyewear is to give people the choice that they're used to having in eyewear and sunwear, but with the performance that they need for 3D. And you'll see ladies and men's. Um, we have children's styles over here on the wall and children's colors. Uh, we have solutions for people who wear prescription lenses as well. Uh, if you're not 2020 and you have prescription uh, eyeglasses, we have uh, clip-on models that will fit over the top. We have uh, full fit over frames that will go completely encapsulate the RX. Uh, and in a few months, we'll be launching our new prescription uh, lens uh, line that will actually allow you to have just one pair of glasses that will include your prescription, and you won't have to wear the glasses over the glasses. And uh, you'll be able to have your individual prescription made in our uh, M3D lenses. So uh, let me ask you this, what makes your what makes your glasses different than the regular real D glasses that I would get at the theater? Well, uh, a lot of things, but I guess the most obvious to start with is the fact that they're curved. We have patented technology for taking uh, flat material and then curving it to be optically correct and give you benefits that are more akin to conventional eyewear. Uh, curved lenses allow you to put them into frames that fit more comfortably on the face. Uh, those of us, and pretty much all of us, have worn the flat uh, glasses in the theater. They tend to sit out far from the face, slide down the nose, and often uh, just are uncomfortable to wear for long periods. So uh, the curved lens allows you to have a better fit, better comfort, and most importantly, it gives you the best uh, 3D performance as well. Why, if you, why would that be? Why would a curved glass give you better 3D performance? Than well, the key to uh, 3D performance is to try to maintain as close as a perpendicular angle looking through the lens as possible. And when you have a curved lens, you're able to have a reasonably wide field of view and still be looking at a, at a uh, close to a perpendicular angle through the lens. So you get higher contrast, better performance, and when you're wearing them, you also block much of the light from the sides. Uh, you may notice our temples tend to be a little bit wide compared to maybe normal eyewear. And one reason we do that is actually gives a performance advantage where whether you're in the theater or at home, by blocking light from the sides, you get better contrast. Uh, People that have worn sunglasses for fishing know, have known that a long time because they, they go like this. They say, "Wow, I can see a lot better. The contrast literally improves." So the the curved lens uh, uh, technology gives us both comfort, fashion, uh, and of course functional advantages. So you mentioned use outside of the theater. What what, what what happens then with the polarization if you were to wear them to drive, let's say, or walk around? Well, good question. Um, because there, there is no circular polarization in the real world, uh, uh, almost none. There's a couple of beetles that uh, wings put out circular polarization, but by and large, it's a man-made uh, uh, form of light. 
And so outdoors, circular polarized lenses function essentially as non-polarized sunglasses, meaning that they are they they would be good for moderate light, general purpose. They're not going to be extremely dark. I would not recommend them for skiing or at the bright uh, beach because they're probably not going to be dark enough for most people. But for general use, walking out down the street on a sunny day or in, in driving would be uh, would be suitable. They meet, for example, the uh, American National Standards for uh, sunwear for uh, all of the characteristics that relate to uh, general purpose use requirements for sunwear. So I've, I've noticed sometimes my, my sunglasses are polarized and when I go to the airport I can't read the panel display sometimes because the polarization will actually cancel out LCD right. panels. Is that an issue with your glasses? Yeah, well? I, you know, the, uh, I, the, the, polar, the LCD displays that I've seen are, use linear polarization. And this is uh, uh, a problem that people have noticed with linear polarized sunglasses. And uh, you may have to tilt your head a little bit to, to see the, uh, the full brightness of the LCD display. Um, I think many of the uh, automobile companies are recognizing that people wear polarized lenses and are taking steps to kind of minimize those issues. But I'm not, I, I, I don't think there's much use of circular polarization on, on automobile LCD displays. Obviously, we have it in 3D. Now, are they going to have 3D displays come into the navigation systems? I don't know. Right. Maybe that'll be the next thing. I, I, I'm waiting to get the one where I can see navigation on the driver's seat and the passenger can watch the video all at the same time in a full screen. But um, So can you talk a little bit about active versus passive? Obviously, you make only passive glasses right now. Is active glasses yeah. in the makes as well? Or? Well, you know, there's a lot of active systems out there. In fact, we, we've been asked to make active eyewear uh, because we know a lot about designing and creating great frames. Uh, and uh, everyone knows that, that active eyewear would really benefit. And, and it has improved. I mean, you've got to give the active eyewear people they have uh, improved from a few years ago. Uh, they're less heavy, but they're still heavy and they have batteries. Uh, the big advantage, I think, of passive system is they're very maintenance free. You don't have to worry about batteries uh, and they're affordable. If you have many people over to your home, if you get a 3D system and you'll probably have a lot of new friends, uh, the active, si active glasses are, what, $100, $150 and very expensive. So I think it's a combination of the the cumbersomeness of the, the product, the weight, the batteries that are required, and the cost all lean in favor of passive eyewear. And I think when people uh, discover that not only passive eyewear works great in the theater, but as people start to see the new passive displays come into bars and restaurants and public venues where people will be wearing passive eyewear, they'll realize that this makes sense for the home too, because you have many people often viewing the same event, whether it's your own family or friends or parties, and you don't want to be constrained by not having enough glasses for people to watch a, a 3D event. But what about the people who say that it's a much lower resolution, obviously, with passive, because you have to essentially either interlace the image or split it, versus an active system that can actually display full resolution in two eyes? Yeah, you know, the, the resolution thing has, uh, has become a, a, a topic of debate. Uh, uh, what I usually ask people is when they you know, they come into our display, uh, display areas here and you try on the eyewear and we, you know, we've been at many shows over the last year and I think I could, I could count on maybe a couple of fingers the number of people who have questioned the resolution of the displays and uh, it's a, it's a, uh, the displays have a, a resolution, uh, 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 disadvantage vertically compared to some of the active systems, but the advantages, I believe, offset that. And usually the, the resolution becomes an issue if you're too close to the screen, which you don't want to be anyhow. I mean, you want to stay within that, on this type of display, I would recommend normally six to eight feet, no closer. And for those, you know, most viewers don't notice the resolution issue. And as long as the 2D quality is not compromised uh, in a noticeable way. We just don't think it's uh, going to be an issue. The other thing I should say is that it's also no secret that uh, a lot of work is being done to continue to move the bar 
on resolution for both 2D and 3D uh, sets, and you've seen the uh, work done with Real D and Samsung collaborating to have active retarder technology where the active part of the system will be in the screen and not in the glasses. So you'll still be able to use our passive eyewear, but you will have an active retarder in the screen that will get to a full 1080 resolution.